So a wheel motor, also known as a hub motor, is an electric motor which is integrated into the hub of a wheel so that the wheel effectively becomes an electric motor or so that the electric motor effectively becomes a wheel, depending on which way you look at it, right? Now this type of motor is used a lot in all kinds of small electric vehicles, so things like electric bikes, scooters, electric mopeds, electric skateboards, things like this. Now I want to make an electric skateboard and therefore I want one of these hub motors so, so that I can make one of the wheels of that skateboard a hub motor and propel me forwards. But I don't have a hub motor of the right size and I find it quite difficult to find ones of the right size for the skateboard that I have. And even if I could find them, that wouldn't be very interesting to make a video about, right? Just buying a product online and putting it on the skateboard. No. So instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making my own hub motor, or at least I'm going to try to do it. So what I have here is I have a wheel from, the, from a skateboard and I have an electric motor. And the idea is that if we take these two, we can combine them into a DIY wheel motor. So let's have a go at this. So my plan is to take this wheel and then somehow remove the original plastic hub from it and then basically just stick the electric motor in there to replace it. And then what we want to do is we want to make that a really tight fit so that there is no slip between the motor and the, and the, the wheel cover. Then what we also need to do is we need to modify the truck on the skateboard so that we can attach this motor to it because, well this is kind of a weird shape with the shaft sticking out so we might have to grind the shaft off as well and then we'll just make a little motor mount which we can weld onto uh, the skateboard truck and then hopefully we can fit it all on the skateboard and then ride it. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's go to the shed and try to actually build this. So we've got some bad news. Apparently the outside of this hub is not smooth. You see there are these... You can see if you look in there, I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but there are pointy things sticking out from the hub into the wheel cover, which I guess is good design because it means the wheel cover won't slip on there, but still it makes it really difficult to remove that wheel cover for me now. <laughs> Thank goodness it's out. <laughs> that was actually pretty difficult to do, but now you can see now you can see how that was interlocking and therefore very difficult to, to remove. So now what we need to do is get this wheel cover onto the electric motor. So after a lot of messing about with the, with the knife, and a lot of trial and error, I think that we should now be able to get this onto the motor. It's going to be very tight, but we should be able to do it. Come on. There you go, so that is the first bit. That's the trickiest part. There you have it. <laughs> 
one custom made wheel motor for an electric skateboard. Now it's a bit of a weird shape as you can see. Um, I'm not sure that's going to be a problem, maybe. I mean, I guess we could try and, and like file it off or like reshape it to be flat. But on the other hand, we know that that's going to happen anyway when you ride the skateboard. So I might as well just leave it like this. Now what we just need to do is find a way of getting this wheel motor attached to our normal skateboard, which is obviously not designed to be used with this weird wheel motor that we've just made. So this is my plan. Right here I've got a piece of steel which fits onto the electric motor like so, because this is from a motor mount that I made before, and actually here's a spacer that can go in between, and then you can screw that onto the motor just like that. And so now my idea is to take this piece of metal and then somehow attach it to the truck of the skateboard and then you can attach the motor to it just like that. So there it is, that is quite possibly the weirdest electric skateboard I've ever seen. Maybe the weirdest skateboard in general actually, because look at that. <laughs> it might be a bit far off towards that side, but still, you know, it might just work, I don't know. It would be quite cool if it does. So it's now about one week later, um, which is quite a while. And that's because shortly after recording that, I ended up kind of destroying the electric skateboard. So what happened is I went for a short test ride and then I, <laughs> I kind of burned up the electric motor. So there was a lot of smoke and then it stopped working. So I then had to take the motor apart and rewind it to make you know, new coils, which was an absolute pain to do. Um, but, you know, here we are, the electric skateboard has now been repaired and it is ready to ride, so I can finally show you that it actually does work. Right then. This thing is working super well. Look at this. So to all of you who are thinking, is that going to work? You know, are those bearings going to hold up? Pretty well, actually. Right, 
So now let's take a closer look at some of the technical aspects of the rest of this skateboard because I just realized I haven't really shown you the rest of this thing just yet. All right, so obviously at the back over here we've got the electric motor wheel, which you've already seen, uh, which is now rewound, as I mentioned, so it's got new coils inside it because I, well, <laughs> I burned up the old ones. These coils are also di connected in a different way, so it used to be connected in delta, now it's connected in star so that the motor draws less current and therefore gets less hot and hopefully it doesn't burn up again. So the motor is connected through this cable to an electronic speed control over here which is powered from a lithium ion battery which is inside this little aluminium case at the front. And then the speed control gets the information on you know, how much power the motor should get through this wire from an Arduino which is sitting inside this metal box which is connected to my to my throttle, right? So when I press this throttle that sends an analog signal through the cable to the Arduino which processes that information, turns it into a digital signal which goes to the speed control and then the speed control drives the electric motor wheel at the back. So when you apply throttle the wheel spins. It's that simple really. So at this point some of you might be wondering what's the top speed of this thing? How fast will it go? Well I'm not quite sure. I think it'll do about 25 kilometers per hour or so but we don't have a very good road surface to test this on because it's quite rough and the wheels are quite small so that's not very good for the top speed and also I'm not a very good skateboarder so I tend to fall off before I reach uh, full power because it's actually quite fast. But I'm going to give it a go anyway, so I'll put a GPS, well, my phone-based speedometer app in my pocket, and then we'll just have a go at this, right? So apparently this app doesn't work. Well, it did, but it's now stopped working, so we need a new method of measuring my speed. So I have a cunning plan to, to measure my speed. So what I thought is, what we'll do is we'll use a speed trap, right? So we'll put like two markers on the ground, with a known distance between them, I'll ride past them as fast as I can, and then in the edit, we'll time the time, the amount of time it takes to go between those two markers, and then we can calculate the speed, right? Then I realized I don't have any, like, tape measure or anything to measure that, that known distance between those two markers, so how do I measure that? And then I realized I have one object with me of which I precisely know how long it is. Allow me to demonstrate. These are the two markers that I'm going to use. <laughs> now these two are exactly 1.76 meters apart. So here we are at the computer in my video editing software and now we can look at this footage and determine exactly how fast I was going. So if we just skip ahead a few frames you can see me starting to get into the frame. Here I come, right? And then right about here the front of my skateboard matches up with or lines up with the first marker that I placed. And so now we're going to count how many frames it takes before I reach the second one over here. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'd say 17 frames, right? So this video is 50 frames per second. So we go over here to our calculator and we do 17 divided by 50 which means it took 0 0.34 seconds to travel between those two markers. Now, the distance between them is 1.76 meters, because that was my height, remember. So, what we can do is we can say um, 1 point, oops, 1 1.76 uh, divided by 0 0.34, which gives us 5. 176 meters per second. 
To convert that into kilometres per hour, we do times 3.6, giving us 18.6 kilometres per hour. Which <laughs> is actually quite slow, to be honest. Like, I expected a bit more. But it was quite difficult to ride fast on this, you know, pretty uneven road surface, given my, you know, rather poor skateboarding skills. I, I need some more practice on this thing. So perhaps we should revisit the speed test some other time. Uh, but for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, of course, thank you for watching.